Thank you for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. We're glad to have you with us today. We've got a show lined up for you. We're very excited to announce that we have a very special interview to share from a 15-year-old music artist in Canada. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we got that coming up. We also have the music industry news that we always do and beats by yours truly. Oh, yeah. Got to have them beats now. Got to have them beats. <laughs> yep. So we'll get into that before we take you to Brantford, Ontario. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go.
Thank you so much for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. We're very, very, very excited to announce that we have Jacob D'Souza in the building with us today. How are you feeling? I'm good. How are you? Great. Well, we're excited to have you on. Um, you know, you just got such presence in your music and a great sound and so you know we're excited to have you share who you are with the audience so if you could give them a little bit of background on who is Jacob D'Souza uh, when you got started with music and all that good stuff yeah um so yeah my name is Jacob D'Souza I'm 15 years old from Brantford Ontario Canada I've been doing music for just about as long as I can remember my parents run a music school here in here in Brantford and they've been doing that since I was about three years old. So since then I've been playing music. I started out with playing violin. I played drums. I wasn't uh, six until I started playing guitar. And you know, I've always sang, you know, just as anyone does, just singing along to music on the radio. <laughs> you know, just how anyone sings when they're a little kid. And when I was 10 years old, I started writing music. My sister was doing it, so I, uh, I decided, hey, this is cool. Let's start doing it myself, and been doing that for about five years now. And uh, yeah, wow. Well, that's got to be pretty awesome to just kind of have that background for as far as you can remember. Um, you know, since you've been writing lyrics, what are some of the things that you do to kind of draw inspiration? Um, lyrics have always been um, a struggle for me. When I'm writing my songs, I usually start with the musical aspect. They usually start with writing uh, a chord progression, just get a few chords together and um, I see where the lyrics take me from there. But recently with um, uh, with the lockdowns and quarantining, there's been a lot more to write about. There's been a lot more inspiration to write about. So it's starting to come a lot more naturally to me. And I'm really, uh, I'm really happy about that, that I can start um, writing lyrics more naturally. Wow, that's really awesome. Um, you know, a lot of people have kind of went the opposite way since the pandemic yeah. started. So, you know, if you could maybe give some pointers for people who may be struggling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I've, when the pandemic happened, it's just, you know, I'm doing nothing all day, just sleeping in until three o'clock and, you know, just... <laughs> And I realized I've got all this time, so I might as well start writing a lot, writing more songs because you know what I love doing. So I decided to take it upon myself to start writing more, and it just kept happening. Wow! Writing more, more songs, I think in the in about seven or eight months, I've written maybe ten or fifteen songs. Wow! That is really, really phenomenal. So. Yeah, if you could maybe give um, the audience a little heads up about um, the song that you have available on Spotify now. Kind of give us a little background. It's called Come Back to You. It was released February 15th. It's out everywhere now. Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your music. I wrote it in, I think I wrote it around May. And <clears throat> what it's about is just the falling out that I had with a friend. I just sort of like a friend group falling out that I had. It's um, exaggerated. It's not like the, the lyrics don't exactly match up with the situation, but it's exaggerated. And that's what you have to do when you're writing lyrics. Not everything can be exact. You have to exaggerate some things. So the song carries a better story, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a, the big secret of some of the greatest songwriters that there are. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Breezy? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. You know, when times of trials and tribulations come up, then, hey, that brain gets thinking, gets ticking, and next thing you know, you come up with some bright ideas. Yes, absolutely. So for, like, how does it feel to have been able to, you know, complete that amount of work in such a short amount of time? Oh, it, it's incredible. I obviously didn't expect to be able to do that. And, uh, but before this, I didn't expect to ever release music to be honest but i've it just sort of happened it's i started recording music on my own in my room on my computer and from there i uh worked with my manager daniel lamb and he said hey you know maybe we could record these professionally and release them so i said yeah let's do it and that's what happened wow <laughs> 
Isn't that just great? Well, you know, that that starting out at that that the basics of the building blocks, you know? I mean, and and uh you start out at a at a high level, other things happen that may not pan out, but when you start with the basic building blocks and hey, gentleman comes along and says, "Well, let's go ahead and do this." And you say, "Yeah, well, let's go ahead and record this and boom, you know, it's it's just flowing the way that you want it to flow." Yeah. yeah. And that's a great thing to note that you had to have everything ready. You were prepared when the opportunity presented itself. And that's something that not a lot of artists recognize that, you know, it's it's always good to just have stuff in the bag. Yeah, absolutely. I had all the time to do all this, so I put used to it. <laughs> you know, sometimes some sometimes that that spontaneous thing, that's the one that hits. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And so what do you see um, coming forward in the next couple months or so for you? Um, I hope to have another single out in two or three months. Hopefully, you know, just a lot of COVID restrictions here in Ontario right now. So not sure exactly when I'm going to be able to do that. But hopefully within the next two or three months, there's going to be another single. And by later this year or early 2022, I want to have an EP out with four or five songs. Great. I'm really excited to, to hear what you're cooking up because I, I mean, I love what I've heard so far. And so that's really exciting. So if you could, you've already mentioned about how your family has the background in music. And of course they were a huge influence on you, but is there um, somebody maybe notable like in the industry or certain artists that have influenced you as well? Yeah, um, the biggest one is the Beatles. They were the first obsession I had with any music. And that's when I started writing music. I was around 10 years old when the obsession grew with the Beatles. I listened to, I tried to listen to every single Beatles song. I tried to familiarize myself with every single Beatles song, which was hard. You know, there's what, 200 of them? It wasn't easy. I never <laughs> forgot. To do it. Yeah, they <laughs> do as, as much Beatles music as possible. I learned how to, I learned how to write music. They, they were, uh, they were who taught me how to write music. Yeah, well, you know, there was there was one song that I really fell in love with myself. Uh, not that many people really adhered to it, but uh, a song called Tax Man. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I like the groove from that song. And, and uh, even to, through this day, when I mention it to folks, they say, well, what? What? <laughs> but see, now, you know, if you bounce right back like this and say that you're aware of it, see, that, that gives me a, a deeper... Uh, awareness of you and your background yeah so you know to, to have been doing music for as long as you have what are some of the things that you've learned the more that you pour yourself into your art um, just along the journey tips that you might have to help anybody else out there I think the biggest thing that I've learned is as you listen to more music and you expand your um, taste I I think that's the right word you expand your taste then um, you know more about how to write and how to create it because you can only put out what's inside of you. So as you learn more genres and you learn more different types of music, you'll have a deeper understanding of how it's, um, how it's laid out and how it sounds and how it's supposed to sound. Mm, you can only put out what's inside of you. I love that. Oh no, I, I I agree. You know, I mean, it's 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 the freshness uh, that this young man is bringing, and with the with the attitude, you know, the freshness and the attitude. It's it's not a an abrasive attitude. It's an attitude of of uh, straightforwardness and success. Okay? So uh, the freshness and the attitude is a powerful combination, and uh, so that 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 leaves that. Uh, that effervescent type of upbeat type of atmosphere for me you know i don't know about the others so i'm, I'm feeling the positivity <laughs> indeed so you've mentioned you know that you've got some plans as far as uh, new releases coming out are there any specific artists that you know you'd love to work with whether it's somebody that you actually know or even in like your perfect dream world um yeah um I, that's a great question um, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, it would be incredible to um, uh, write a song with Paul McCartney because, you know, that's that's how I got it. It would be great to see how he does it, to see if there's any similarities 
between how um, uh, how he writes a song and how I write a song, because that's from listening to his music is how I started learning how to write music. Mm, yeah, so like collaboration would just be heavenly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know, um, it's good to have you around because you know what you bring is a different approach uh, with the with the music, with the background, and um, the 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 ambition. Okay, so that ambition is coming through real, real strong right now, and, and uh, I like it. So uh, I'm hoping for some great things for you uh, in the next few days, as well as the next few months and years. Yeah, thank you. Indeed. And also, just so you know, anytime that we have guests on that we really appreciate and we know that they're doing spectacular things, we make sure that we keep the door open. So, you know, this doesn't have to be a one and done thing. The next time you've got something else coming out, if you want to come on the show, you know, we'll roll out the welcome mat for you. Oh, thank you. That's good to know. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it's just it's it's wonderful. Like, you know, Breezy had already alluded to like the confidence and everything that you have. It takes a lot of people that have been doing this a lot longer uh, to get to where you are. And I feel like it's just really refreshing to, to kind of hear that vibe and get that energy from you. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had a lot of time to, uh, you know, during uh, the last year to just think about what I want to do and what I want to be uh, as a musician. So I think that's where uh, that's where that comes from. So I I've had the time to discover what I'm trying to do here. Mm, yeah, that's really incredible. Your inroads ahead of uh, you know where some people started. So that's yeah, that's just phenomenal. I, I salute you. And you know, I I do need to to ask this question. I hope it's not like too personal or deep. Because you mentioned that, you know, the song that you have out now is based on something that happened, but you exaggerated. But there was so much, you know, feeling in your voice. Where do you kind of draw the 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 tone? You know what I mean? Like the the emotion behind what do you what you do? Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's a great question. I don't really know. I just. <laughs> I try to sing based on the emotion of the song. Like that's mm. the song. So I try to I tried to sing with a lot of anger, and mm. um, th that's that's what I came from. I didn't really think of the uh, <laughs> situation a lot when I when singing it. To be honest, um, mm. I just tried to put as much emotion into it as possible because that's how you get the best results when you're singing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so there was so much heart and soul in it. So like as soon as I hit play, I'm like, oh wow, this is incredible. <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of had to know, you know, basically for my own self. Sorry, listeners, but yeah, I, I just needed to know <laughs> the background behind that. So before we get ready to close this out, if you could let everyone know where they can find you, um, you know, social media and all that good stuff to make sure that they can keep up with what you've got coming up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Jacob D'Souza Music on both of them. And that's D'Souza, D-S-O-U-Z-A. And uh, the song, Come Back To You, is everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, it's on YouTube, it's everywhere. All right, you've got the information, people. Make sure that you look him up, look into him. And you're going to say, hey, I remember when I checked him out on Music Marvels because you will definitely <laughs> be hearing his name again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we thank you so much for joining us today. And we can't wait to have you back again in the future. Yeah, thank you for having me. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Man, he's so talented. It was really, really good to have him on. You know, just like we had alluded to, you know, the confidence and everything was just kind of radiating from him and rightfully so. So, you know, we're excited for him, the big things that he's doing and what's to come. Yeah, you know, his 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 aura is really far reaching in many different ways and for many different reasons. And so uh, that was that was a good spot right there. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. So we're going to get back to some more music and we'll be back with music industry news right after this.
right, it's music industry news time. One of the big things that happened, which I felt was just like the statistics were just so incredible. So check it out. Like at the start of the pandemic, people were being locked down, not a lot to do. So for the year of 2020, major labels released 1.2 million songs. Okay. But DI- yeah, but DIY artists released 9.5 million. <laughs> DIY artists have surpassed the major labels by eight times. So, you know, the indies are out here grinding. I mean, major labels too, but indies where it's at showed up and showed out for 2020. Well, you know, in, in my opinion, that news spot right there is, is crucial. And so, you know, absorb that, absorb those facts, those stats, because uh, you know what? What a chick with beats is bringing on that is is just it's mind boggling. <laughs> yes. So you know, kudos to all of you who have released music in 2020. That means that you're a part of that statistic. You know, keep it going and just shine. I've always been a fan and a supporter of indie artists, and you know, it's, it's just beautiful news to hear. Mm-hmm. Also, Universal Music Group launches Virgin Music Label and Artist Services. So according to the press release, they said that it's a new global networking, premium and flexible artist label. And so they're trying to help the most dynamic entrepreneurs, independent talent all over the world. And it's supposed to be inspired and influenced by the spirit and ethos of the iconic Virgin Records label. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to see them making a bigger splash, if you will. Mm -hmm. And the Recording Academy has announced Women in the Mix. So it's going to be a virtual celebration that's going to happen on Women's Day this year, International Women's Day this year, which is March 8th. So it's supposed to recognize the contributions of women in music and amplify female voices throughout the industry. So some of the women being recognized include Cindy Lauper, MC Light, Sheila E., and a whole lot more. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you check it out. That'll be going down virtually March 8th. Okay. Shout out to the to the ladies, to the women. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. And we'll be back with more music industry news after this pause for the cause beats by yours truly.
we're back with round two of music industry news. Music creation marketplace Splice just secured another $55 million of funding through investors. So this is just another round. They actually had one in March of 2019. And so between these two rounds of funding where they're, you know, opening it up for investors to kind of jump in, now their total that they've raised has hit $155 million. So just a little background, if you're not really familiar with Splice, it's really popular with producers and, you know, other uh, music makers because they offer royalty-free sample packs and loots and, you know, all that good stuff. So they've uh, been making some inroads. They've got some, some big changes ahead since they're securing all this money. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, according to Splice, the user activity has increased by 50% since last year. And so they've paid out a record $15 million in 2020 alone in uh, royalties for all the creators uploading their music for um, other producers to be able to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and according to Bloomberg, now uh, Splice is worth close to $500 million. <laughs> Some of these amounts are mind boggling, you know, and, and so you got to absorb them to the best extent that you can. But now on a whole nother front, I've got to to bring this this news item up. And that's the fact that right here on this show, the original music that you had that you hear is it's actually written and composed and, and, and uh, uh, recorded by that one and only lady, a chick with beats. Okay, so those beats out there that you hear that we're playing on a, on a weekly basis, uh, if you are an up and coming artist or if you are a professional a seasoned artist, there are beats of all kinds of, of genres, songs of different genres. And so you might want to, well, not might, you want to go to a chick with beats.com and uh, scroll through the selections because there could be a beat right there waiting for you or your next hit song that she has uh, created. And so you want to check that out at achickwithbeats.com. Thank you so much. Very, very much appreciated. <laughs> All right. Also in news, Spotify is planning to expand in over 80 new markets across Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, and Latin America. And so once this occurs, It'll bring their total reach to 173 markets. So, yeah. (laughs) So this announcement actually comes a year after Apple Music announced expansion into 52 new markets, which brought its total reach to 167. So now they're kind of neck and neck. It'll be Spotify at 173, Apple Music sitting at 167. But uh, Spotify stated that they believe that there's a potential billion new Spotify users across these markets that they're moving into. So yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see what happens there and also to see what Apple Music's response will be after this. Develop and acquire seems to be their move. Wow. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because a lot of those um, locations that they listed that they were moving into, you know, there's a huge potential because streaming is still fairly new. So, you know, they've got like a lot of local streamers, but with these U.S. companies kind of moving into these territories, it's kind of given them more choices. And so there's a lot of room for growth there. And it's a logical move. But yeah, I'm kind of curious to see, especially between Spotify and Apple, you know, which one will kind of be went out for uh, who's more popular in some of these other areas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we shall see. <laughs> yep. And according to Warner Music Group, they've had record earnings. Um, Their fiscal year is a little bit different from the calendar year. But uh, even though streaming helped them realize like a double digit growth, they're thinking that most of their money is going to be coming from the rise of Roblox. So they joined Roblox um, in investing in them $520 million in January. And so they're they're betting big that a lot of these streaming platforms and all these other platforms that um, you know saw a boost from the pandemic since people weren't going places they were you know visiting these sites more frequently. Warner states that they don't think that that's going to die down. So even you know with the vaccine and maybe the live scene coming back, 
you know, a little bit to more like what we're used to, they're thinking that there's still a lot of growth in these areas. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And as far as indie artists are concerned, you know, you might want to check that out too, because if the major labels are betting that way, that means that they're seeing trends that we might not be aware of. So, you know, you might want to look for ways that you can be able to share your music across platforms that aren't necessarily known for music, but a great way to reach potential new fans. Absolutely. And, you know, here's a, a gold nugget, a real golden nugget um, for the aspiring artists out there, indie artists out there. OK, these news bullets are giving you information about uh, income, profits and, and charting and so on and so forth. So for the beginner or even the in intermediate uh, indie artist, you yourself, you've got to chart your own expenses. See, now we're talking on the financial breeze side. Chart your expenses and keep up with those expenses. Don't just let the money come in and then you're spending willy-nilly on this, that, the other. At the end of the day, you don't have anything to show for it, i.e. gold chains and stuff. <laughs> okay, so... You know, we we know that might be part of the of the of the uh, the umbrella, but keep up with your expenses. Chart these expenses because in the long run, that's going to help you pay yourself. So when you hear these these news beats about these big corporations and their income and revenues and so on and so forth, uh, shape that down to yourself. Look at your own income. Look at your own profits and and chart those keep them in books or whatever keep records for yourself financial records so you know where you are and keep up with your spending which if you do that it'll help you keep your own money in your pocket long or in your bank account mm, that is great excellent advice and thank you so much for sharing that see that's one of the things i love so much about this time of the week the information and tidbits that uh, we're able to share to help you in your career so you know Thank you, Breezy, for sharing that, and please take it to heart. Yes, yes, because it's it's not just the big corporations and huge uh, uh, people who are collaborating, companies who are collaborating with themselves or with other uh, businesses. You got to got to dumb it all the way down to the individual indie artist. Mm -hmm. Are you? How are you keeping records of what your of your intake and your income as well as your expenditures and uh so because so at the end of the day you and only you are responsible for that and if you want to progress in this industry keep record keeping is just at the at the at the forefront mm -hmm. it's very vital yeah couldn't have said that any better and so yep yeah, that's the bulk of the industry news that we have for you this week um, fun tidbit for any of the music film lovers um, if you're into documentaries and biopics and all that good stuff Amazon Prime has debuted a music film streaming channel called the Coda Collection so it's going to have a bunch of documentaries concert films and you know rare performance footage from music icons and so this is going to be available initially to U.S. residents for $4.99 a month before they start expanding out into uh, international markets as well by the end of the year. Absolutely. Yep. So, all right, that wraps it up for this. We're going to get back to a little more music before we come back to close out the night with you. Sounds good.
since that time, I have really enjoyed myself. I've had fun with this episode as usual, and I'm looking forward to doing it again next week and hope that you'll join us. Oh, man, I can't wait either. It's, it's just going to be a blast. Yep. So you know what to do. We'll be back same time, same place. Tune in, tell a friend, and we'll see you then. Peace. <laughs>